quantities e part program we have kept it less on mathematical theory and more on the application side right having said that we do focus a bit on the theory also because you need to be prepared for how why you're doing what you're doing right so that needs some bit of theory but not too much of it so what i mean to say is that when we are talking what say for example option pricing models we would uh, definitely learn about different option pricing models and the intuitive understanding behind it but more focus then will go towards how to apply what kind of model and why rather than going into the derivations and the stochastic calculus and other things around that right so that would be less focus more focus on the application side uh, so some bit of mathematical understanding would be definitely helpful you will be provided with a lot of primers as well so that's there if you are totally new to statistics and mathematics then having a few weeks of refresher the team can share some uh, uh, links with you that can really really help so maybe focused one or two weeks can also just prep you up and then the primers and other things which can be there first is before the program starts right so there are primers that aklesh mentioned so which you do at your own side but uh, support managers also help you and ensure that you do do them right and uh, there are some assessment tests and stuff which you can do at your own at your own end only that's not proctored and uh, then we also have prep sessions so that those are live online sessions preparatory sessions which are optional but you get to do them before the ipad starts and then first about two and a half months which is 50 to 20 percent of the duration in that we start slow and we keep basic so that people because there are people coming from different backgrounds so some are really good in technology side some are not so good some are really needing help on statistics but some are already having a strong expertise in that so it varies right so so we start slow there and then after a sixth week or so then it paces up quite a bit so yeah So we will be covering different APIs in the TBP module, so which is a trading and backtesting platforms. So where you we take illustrations for different kind of APIs. So we cover REST API, we cover Python API, we cover uh, wrappers, Python wrappers. We also cover uh, uh, ready to use engines, right? So all those different aspects that we do. So we are not focused on specific platforms per se, but more of different ways to interact with machines. So in terms of strategies, as I said that uh, the program is not about creating or provide, providing strategies, but more from the perspective of uh, offering the conceptual frameworks or how to come up with different trading strategy ideas and how to go through the entire trading strategy journey, right? So optimize and backtest and apply and implement all those things. You can create and the program also covers different kind of ideas. It starts right from the basics of you know any strategies which are one leg kind of strategies which is single leg strategy single instrument strategies where you are looking at the trend momentum or the looking at the market microstructure aspect of a particular security and order book and stuff and then you are making a decision based on that okay what is likely to happen up or down so so that is one set of strategy then there are the group of instruments which you look at together which is more of a portfolio kind of approach but still at the initial level it would be say statistical arbitrage right so that you that you apply then the next step is that okay you have uh, all these different kind of strategies which are their portfolio strategies now how to use say for example machine learning right to figure out that okay what kind of strategies should be active at what point of time right so using machine learning for that aspect and then then having those kind of strategies specific strategies that are going being active at that point of time and another set based on what are the outputs which are coming in from your ml model right so that can be the kind of strategies then the fourth would be more towards say for example options trading model which is i think almost uh, uh, five to six sessions which are dedicated to that where it's all about understanding the volatility modeling and the greece greeks aspect of it right and using them to actually trade them as the instrument as complex as options should be traded because say for example options trading is traded a lot especially in india and also now these days in americas both in us as well as in brazil but what we often see is that people use it to trade direction by just having it as a leveraged um, way of uh, 
uh, trading the directional movement of uh, underlying security and which is not really the reason why options exist, right? So they are much more complex instruments which where you are trading the Greeks and not really the just the underlying direction. So understanding it more from that perspective and actually creating models based on those insights and then uh, uh, trading. So that can be another set of strategy. Then you can have multi-instrument strategy. So where you are integrating different kind of instruments and coming up with strategies. So, so that's it. So these are some of the strategy ideas which are there. And if you're looking at more of technical indicator and all those things, which is more of like an initial level, level one itself, which you get to cover in the EPAD curriculum that any of the indicators and other stuff that you want to use, you would be able to use. And on the other extreme, you can even would be able to use sentiment or news related uh, models, right? So machine readable news and other things, which also get covered in the EPAD journey in the machine learning because NLP, national language processing and all those things are also covered, which helps you to create algorithms which can trade based on an automated way using news and other aspects as well. So about 25-27% of the people who enroll for EPAD, they are looking for their for the jobs. 75% are either for upskilling themselves or for setting up their own trading or their own desk or launch a business venture, entrepreneurship, all those things which we have seen. And most of the people may not be looking for it, but those who are looking for it. So we have a dedicated placement cell just for that. One of the sized up team, which uh, connects with the, the institutions globally and get gathers the, the openings and also shares with the, the relevant people from the alumni pool. Because it's not just there for the duration of the program, it's there after the program as well. So we have a, like of thousands of people who are the alumni, EPAD alumni from across the globe. So they all get that placement support for those who are interested. Of course, sets the pyramid so there are more number of people at the entry level there are less number of people at the top level so that's there in each in every firm and everywhere in the every industry so that's there here as well so you'll get more you'll get to see more initial and mid-level openings less the senior openings but that's how the composition also is So I think the king is that EPAD is not a degree program, it's a certification program and it does invite and accept people with very strong mathematical and programming backgrounds and we have some of many of the people from Ivy League universities globally and the top, even in India, top IDs, top IMs, even the professors from these premier institutes who have done this program, right? So who have been alumni and uh, oh. Even the, if we talk about that, many of the billionaire founders, most of the co-founders or CXOs in the algo trading domain in this area, in this region. So they are largely, many of them are EPAT alumni and that has really helped them in many facets, some to complete transformation to some uh, bridging the gaps, right? So in uh, what their understanding was, because EPAT is a very structured program. So all these people also gain a bit of uh, help on that aspect. Apatians would have people who are coming from a very initial background to very experienced or heavy duty background. It can be, it's a combination of all and the people who are looking for what kind of opportunities, they gain those kind of opportunities. Of course, we help in during EPAD as well as after that also for people who are have some skill gaps or need more polishing in terms of moving to more advanced stuff. So that, that assistance is provided through the alumni and placement cell. That's the reason why many of these firms prefer EPAD graduates because they know that in this school they can find people with different background and people who have actually learned something in a practical way. In terms of domain, so we get both on the trading trading strategist or research or developer, strategy developer, even some of the hardware developers also, CTOs kind of roles also we get, but more on the quant research and quant trading side, the roles which are there. And yeah, we don't track those numbers because as I said, that's not the marker. We do not keep track of these two primary things. One is that who is reaching where and who is making what kind of return. So, so these are the two things that we purposely have shied away from tracking for the simple reason to be honest that sales team mentioned that is not tracked because if it is tracked then it becomes outcome driven onboarding process sales process and it's really a very slight gap from doing that 
to any misselling or something because this domain is fraught with that. So the team is strictly not allowed to mention that do this course and you'll make a lot of money or these strategies will uh, generate return. No, it's not. So anyone who is saying that, uh, they're probably lying.